Thank you all so much for coming to our virtue art seminar. Um, this is our second one that's happening. The first um, was late February. And what we're trying to do with this program is really connect our communities through partnership together. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. I'm Kim Goldberg and I'm the co-champion of the arts along with Cece Rodan, who is in the Western Galilee and Istvan Barsoni in Budapest, and I'm here in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Partnership Together, it's a program of the Jewish Agency and the Jewish Federations of North America, and it's about promoting people-to-people -people relationships through cultural, social, medical, educational, and economic programs. Uh, by connecting Israeli citizens cities and regions with Jewish communities worldwide, partnership creates an ever-growing network of support, friendship, as well as a way of understanding the rich variety of Jewish expression around the world. What we're doing is really creating a tapestry of connections. Um, there are 46 partnerships happening right now that engage and connect more than 350,000 Jewish people. Um, we have a mutual responsibility to each other, and by building and supporting these relationships, it will in turn create a stronger connection to Israel and our Jewish experience. So our Western Galilee Partnership connects 16 U.S. cities. Um, it's the U.S. Central Area Consortium. We connect to Israel's Western Galilee and Budapest, Hungary. So our partnership is probably the best, I think, personally, <laughs> of all 46 partnerships. Um, we, we are very active. We um, are made up of an inclusive and very active network of people who focus on mutual exchange of ideas and programs with the goal of developing relationships. And we're dedicated to connecting and creating meaningful, um, a meaningful difference for Jews um, through committees such as community engagement, which this art program is a part of. We have our education uh, committee, academia, resource development, medical, and young adults. So please know that we'll have a Q&A at the end. If you have questions, just submit those via chat. Um, we'll be happy to answer them towards the end. We're super excited to have our guest, Malena from Zumu today. I've been waiting and waiting to hear your talk. So. Please um, first welcome Cece Rodan, my co-chair, and she will introduce our guest speaker. Thank you. Cece had some issues with her camera and, oh wait, I'll admit her and let's see if she, is, she can connect. I just did. Cece. Here she I is. I connected her, yeah. No, she still can't hear us. So, um, uh, I just want to, uh, maybe it's better if uh, you will introduce yourself, Milana, uh, no problem. Zuma director and curator, and we are very excited that you're here. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you all for, uh, for this uh, great evening. Uh, yeah, I was waiting for it. I, I, I'm actually, I will share with you that I, I just drove from Western Galilee to the center of Tel Aviv for two and a half hours. So... If I'm a bit tired, um, please excuse me, but I'll, I'll try to be in, in my best shape. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, how, how did we brought up Zumo, and then we'll start working with, towards Zumo understanding what is this project is about. Uh, so Milana, Milana is a weird name. Uh, it's not Israeli. Uh, so I came when I was one year old, uh, from uh, Ukraine with the cor corner uh, with Moldova. So it's really now in the headlines. And um, I just want to say that uh, I want to pay my respect uh, with the people that are fighting for their homes. So I would like to st start with that. But not just that. I will start 
with the feeling that every immigrant, refugee, a person to, that moves to Iowa, <laughs> for, for, uh, for example, wants to feel part of something, wants to feel belong, wants to be part of the culture that he, that, that is its home, its home. And I think that uh, made me, uh, that ma made me uh, want from a very young age uh, to feel belong and uh, to work with the culture and art field um, really in a really young age. I started actually studying uh, cinematography when I was 15 years old. So since then, and I, uh, I gained some uh, years since then, uh, I was working with the, the art field and the education field as well. So I have like a kind of two uh, uh, two places in my my head. On one hand, on on the right hand is the art, and the other hand was the um, um, the the arts. Um, I actually call myself a change maker. I really wanted to change the situation in Israel towards arts and culture. And uh, even before I was 30 years old, I nominated to be the director and chief curator of the Batyam Museum, uh, Mobi. Uh, so being this young on one hand, on the other hand, want to make, to change the world. Maybe sometimes you can do it only when you're very young. Uh, that was my, my vision. And I knew that Batyam, I don't know if you all know about it, but it's like 10 minutes from Tel Aviv, 10 minutes drive, but uh, mentally, it's like hour and a half <laughs> drive from Tel Aviv. Nobody would go to see art and culture uh, at those days. I'm talking about 14 years ago uh, in Batyam. And I opened their museum. I learned there are a few things. Uh, one, that um, I want every person to be very proud with, with its, its, uh, its culture center, its city, uh, the place that uh, a person lives. And uh, I wanted to make a real change with that. So I built uh, for the city itself, a work plan with the art and culture in the city. Since I knew that most of the people that are working in the municipality and actually they're in charge, they're, they're my bosses. I knew that they understand a bit nothing, like almost nothing about culture and art. And I knew that I want to change their mind that it's not only that the cherry you know on the top of the icing, but actually uh, the base for culture and art for healthy living uh, in Israel. And uh, when I asked uh, my bosses in Batyam, okay, so I got the job now, can you please tell me what is the budget, the annual budget? They told me, what do you need the budget for? Yeah, you just hang up, hang some photos or, or, or paintings, who, who needs budget? So I knew that I understood, okay, I have problem here. I said, okay, no budget, but at least stuff. You have somebody that will help you to hang this photographs. What do you need? Why, why do you need anything else? So since then I understood that I need to make a real change and work with them very closely to, under, to, tell, to explain them what is the role of art and culture in a city like Batyam, 10 minutes drive, but nobody would go to the Tel Aviv Museum to visit. So I made a, a big change. I brought a new staff and uh, with the budget that I started, I end up after four years as a budget for a catalog. An annual budget became a budget for a catalog. Uh, we ran a, a museum uh, with uh, four exhibitions uh, annually. Uh, really, it was really a very interesting contemporary art, cutting edge art. And uh, when I finished there, uh, the reason I finished that that we had we had the reason I finished there was because we had the mayor. I knew that either he will be in jail or either he will be the prime minister. He was already in jail now, so maybe in Israel, in the Israeli uh, reality, he might be a uh, prime minister as well. Who knows here? Uh, so uh, I decided to leave the museum, and then I nominate to curate the Venice, the, the, the Israeli pavilion for the Venice Biennale for 2012 for the architecture. Uh, so we, re we and my two colleagues, we represented Israel. And when I came back, uh, I knew I, I, I was looking, I was looking at myself, and I said, "Okay, what what should I do now? Biennale check, museum check. Where is my next, you know, role or goal?" And I started working with different mayors around the country. 
um, being their advisor for art and culture and explaining them how uh, the peripheral cities around Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Haifa could be a very strong cities with education towards art, towards culture, not as a gentrification, but actually working with the different communities. And uh, when I was working with them, I realized a few things. One is that one of every five kids go once until the age of 18 to a museum. So four of them not going at all. This is a terrible statistics. It's not just happened in Israel, but in Israel, it's very strong. The thing is, if you have an institution, an art institution in the city or not, it's up to the mayor. Today, it's like the mayor is like a sheriff. Today, he wants to have a, a, a cultural institution. He understands why is it important for him. So he can, you know, he can find, allocate the budget. Otherwise, he can decide that uh, motorical sport or golf is important enough, and this is culture as well. And he can, you know, just fuse the money and uh, change this uh, place. And uh, for me, it was terrible uh, since we don't have any. Um, the the government doesn't uh, doesn't control these things at all. And the thing is, if we're looking today at the world, but especially in Israel, we see that every community became closer and closer. We are not communicating between ourselves. Uh, think about uh, this uh, uh, identity, uh, the, the, polit the identity politics. Every community became very close. And me and my neighbor, we are not in communication, not in, not in the door in front of me, of me, and obviously not behind the wall. So I wanted to make this change because I think this is a cultural uh, this is a cultural uh, um, uh, gap. And if it's a cultural gap because I don't know my neighbor, I need to work it out with culture. I need to find a solution with culture. And in this way, I've decided to build uh, Zumo. And um, I will share with you uh, my screen if it's okay by you. Okay. So, Zumo. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, just a second, sorry. Oh, okay. So just to make you understand, Zumo is a combination between two words, uh, Zuz and museum. Zuz is a movement in Hebrew and museum is a museum, museon, yeah? So it's a museum on the move. The idea is that Zumo is a community-based art. What, what, do, what do I mean community-based art? It's a pop-up museum that runs through the country building a new museum every time in a different city based on the knowledge that we study in the place that we are coming. So every museum is different. We are working around six months in every city, uh, top, bottom and bottom up. We are actually mapping the city, understanding the challenges, the weaknesses, the strength of the city. And only then when we understand what is the, what is the interesting subject matter, we decide what will be the subject matter of the exhibition itself? So we take usually a warehouse, a closed supermarket, and, and, and um, a, a factory that just uh, uh, changing uh, hands and becoming uh, private or something like that. And we are building there a museum that will be open for around two months. Like this one. This is in Kiryat Yam. We took actually a, 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 an abandoned supermarket and we made a museum from it. So Zumo has actually three legs. When it's it comes, it comes with art. We work with a community engagement and education. Usually what you know about art, uh, art museums that we have like a pyramid. In the top, you have the art. And on the, on, the, on the base, you have education and community kind of pushing from, from you know, from down there. Uh, you go to, to uh, you bring some schools, you work with different communities. For us, the, this triangle is moving uh, constantly. And sometimes on the tip of, the, of, of our uh, pyramid will be the community engagement. Sometimes it will be education. Sometimes it will be the art. And it's changing from one, one place to the other. I will start with the art. So 
our art is the biggest and, and the largest art exhibition at that time. We invite around more than 50 artists to participate in the art. We start with, again, three legs. In the army here in Israel, we say everything has three legs. So sorry for the army jargon, but I'm trying here to, to make myself uh, explanatory. Uh, I will start with the best Israeli artist. I think that I believe that every kid or grown up should know the Leonardo da Vinci of today. Uh, we have uh, here uh, Sigalit Landau, you might know, or uh, Zoya Cherkaski, different artists that shows in the best Israeli uh, museums, but also abroad. So when we decide what will be the subject matter, we are looking for the best Israeli artists. So every kid in the Israeli periphery, but also in the center, will have the same cu curriculum of art and culture in his own city. So a kid that see in a, a city next to the desert Negev, the Zoya Cherkaski at its own home, and at the same time, they have uh, in the Israeli Museum uh, her solo exhibition. Will feel very proud, and will he will know how to read or to understand the artwork. Okay. Uh, the space is changing from one place to another. What you see here is actually a, a, a towel factory in Arad that we change it actually to a museum itself. So we brought the best Israeli artists, but we create really a magic. It, it looks all, always, um, I, I don't, uh, I'm not a great believer in this, you know, very big holes uh, of the museum. They're beautiful, we have them, but I think that every city needs to have something to be proud or uh, have this, you know, sense of pride in it and culture and art, it's part of it. So I feel that we can take every space and make a magic of it. Yeah. Just, just to see, this is from Chatzor Aglilit, another small city in the northern uh, part of Israel. Again, an abandoned um, uh, warehouse that we changed it and, and worked and brought the great art. Another thing that we have is a residency program. Uh, this is a work by Noah Zeni, one of the artists that was uh, working with us in uh, Kiryat Yam, a city uh, that uh, is, uh, is uh, 10 minutes next to Haifa, but really a city uh, that people are not, it's a periphery of Haifa. So uh, most of the people that live there would tell you that they feel that nobody pay attention to the place. It's a, it's a place that you move, you know, for, they have like the, the most um, um, a percentage of, of immigrants that move there. But when they feel that they're strong enough, they leave the city. I would never tell you this. It's not my own point of view. What we do, as I told you, we are mapping the city and understanding and listening to the people. If you would think about Israel or the world today, we are living in a very fast uh, um, times. We don't have time to listen to people. And the most important thing when you work with the community uh, engagement is to listen. If you come and listen to the different, you know, uh, schools, uh, teachers, uh, the, the mayor or, or different organizations, they will listen to you. So what we do is we invite around between four and six artists to move to the city. We connect them to different communities and they start to build their artwork based on the knowledge of the local communities. This work, uh, Noah worked with uh, girls in distress. And when she asked them, what matters you the most? So she, they told her, nobody sees us. Nobody knows our story. Nobody wants to talk to us. Uh, nobody pay attention. So she decided that, uh, that she will work with them uh, with kind of a formula of photography. And they brought the images of themselves and they put it, they like worked um, on top of the, the, the milk carton, as you probably know in the States, yeah, when people were disappearing, uh, 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 they would put them on the carton. So they used this metaphor for those people, for those girls in distress that nobody pays attention to them. And that was their solution, their stories through Noah's work of art. Think about how how amazing it is, how, how um, uh, empowering it uh, for those girls that brought their families for the first time to the, muse to the museum, show 
her own, their own stories uh, between other amazing artists. Uh, that was very strong uh, thing. Another thing that we do is we work with local artists. So not every uh, lady that work, you know, do, like sewing or something like that, she's an artist. But a lot of artists live in, lives in the Israeli periphery. And what we do is that we connect them, uh, we, we, we contact them starting a research and they become our biggest uh, ambassadors. So it's really beautiful to see a local artist that was just, you know, studying or, or, or um, all of their life struggling that they can show like their own art. And suddenly we are coming and they're becoming our guides in the city. So it's really empowering even for us, I would say, you know, to suddenly know somebody that we never knew that is an artist. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm more than 20 years in the Israeli art scene, a bit more. And, and I know those 2000 artists that we all know each other, you know, going from opening to opening, all nodding to each other, kissing each other, and that's it. And for us, to get to know a, a, a person like Effie Wassa, like uh, this uh, uh, photographer, it's it's amazing. It's really um, it's really strong for us to get to know more artists. And for example, this artist been shown in our exhibition in Kiryat Yam, and now there is a big museum in Haifa, and the curator of Haifa he saw him his artworks in our museum in our pop up museum. And he took him to show him right now, and he has now his works in the Haifa Museum. So it goes, you know, both ways. We are not changing only the communities that we are visiting in, but we are changing the art world as well. And this is very important. So when you make a social change through art, you need to change everything, not, you know, just to change the opportunity for people that live in the periphery, kind of, I would say. You need to change the art world to understand as well what is a community engagement? How do you work with artists? One of the biggest problems today, I travel and, and, and meet with uh, fellow curators around the globe, especially Europe. And, we, and the, the questions we are, we were asking, where is our audience? How can there is just a little bit of people that visiting today the museums? And the answer is that we don't know how to approach different communities. It's not part of their everyday life. They're not, they're not feeling that their stories were being representing in, represented in the museums. So for us to make this change and bring the stories to different museums, it makes the connection between the different, different audiences and the museums themselves. I hope it's not too blurry, but I'm, I'm trying to explain here uh, the idea. So education, as I said, the second or our first, <laughs> you know, um, uh, uh, our, uh, our first peak is the education program. It's very um, important for us. And we use this uh, methodology of the dialogues. We don't explain to these kids, uh, okay, the, uh, Leonardo da Vinci was born, yada, yada. They know the information faster than we do. My kid knows how to find this information, you know, with his cell phone. He doesn't need me. What he needs is he needs the spark. He needs to want to know. He needs to want to find the information and to be excited about it. So what we do is we make the school visits. I would say something about the budget. Most of the budget, we actually, we bring it to the municipality. The municipality is responsibly, responsible only for 20% of the budget. The reason is, is because I know that most of these municipalities not used to spend so much money on art and culture. They used to have small galleries in the periphery. Their budget is very, you know, uh, limited. And then uh, it's really, and no, uh, you, you know, it's not, they can't work with it usually. And the, the, the curators are really frustrated. So most of the people are not coming and it's kind of, you know, uh, this magical circle that uh, nobody coming, nobody's making a uh, good exhibitions, and it goes on and on. For us, we are bringing, we're building a huge exhibition. And when I'm telling the mayor, you know what, you bring only 20%, but you give me carte blanche to enter the schools, to explain the teachers and the, uh, uh, the, 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 the directors of schools or headmasters, 
how art is important and what can they do with the art. In this way, we are they are allowing us to bring all the, the schools to visit the museums. So imagine yourself standing in a museum and thousands of kids in every city coming to visit every school are like in the city and the periphery of the city coming to visit at least once in the museum when are we when we are there uh, we have a really nice ceremony there's a ceremony of uh, the tea and cookie so you usually don't have it in a museum but for us it's kind of a breaking bread ceremony it's a welcoming ceremony it's we want to hear your thoughts you are important so we are welcome you in your own city we are we are guests in your city but we are hosting you in our museum so it's kind of guests and hosts and this ceremony of tea and cookie and then we're starting a conversation asking them what's their interest what, what did, do they know about art maybe and sometimes most of the time it will be their first visit in a museum so it's a way you know to communicate our guides are are always local so we train local people Maybe they won't be, you know, with a bachelor degree in art history. So it's a bit different, but they will be local. They will give you tips about the next restaurant that you want to visit in the city. You will recognize them. Oh, I know him from the youth group, blah, 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 from the, the art center, yeah, or, or whatever. And you will recognize that they're from the city. So we empower them, but in this way, they become our ambassadors in the city itself. And again, it brings much more people, local people, to come to visit uh, at the, the museum. The community engagement. So we always have local partners. As I said, we work top bottom with the mayor, with his, you know, different departments, but also with the grassroots organizations. We always need and we always look for local partners. And the reason is that we don't want to make like really just a pop-up museum. The idea is to plant the seeds for the future uh, contemporary art um, um, center. And the idea is when, that when we, we will leave, this local partners will build uh, something in the city after they had like a really good experience. Uh, so those people with this uh, image that we made our uh, first uh, workshop uh, with our local partners, we become, you know, connected and we understand their own stories, their own needs. And uh, towards that, we start working in the city. Uh, we have our, our collection. Usually it's a, a, a social collection. So it, it changes from one city to another. Uh, on the right hand, uh, this work that you see people laying down on, on the bed, it's a work by Sharon Glasberg, uh, a great artist. And this work, she was collecting um, actually lullabies from the different parts of, of uh, different people that live in the city. And when you, when you lay down, you suddenly hear the music, the different lullabies in Arabic, in the Hebrew, in, um, in different languages that the people brought with them, Russian, whatever. And when you lay down, you suddenly uh, uh, listen to the lullabies of the city. So it's kind of the cultural experience that we all share, but in one mixture. So if you're alone and you lay down on one bed, you listen only to one song. But if there is a group of people that lay down, you suddenly uh, uh, listen to the soundtrack of the old city itself. And this way, when she was collecting, you know, the different voices of the people, we had again a lot of people that that was their own work. They brought their own families to show it to them. So it, they became uh, part of it. This is again another work by her, uh, collecting uh, uh, photographies. This is a video mapping on sand, telling the stories of people that left something when they immigrated to a new city. So again, it's the cultural situation that you move to a new place and you lose something. And she wanted to collect those stories from the different uh, people. 
Uh, we always have a public program and the public program is always built by the local, our local partners. So what you see here, it was in the beginning of COVID, we were working with um, uh, a group of uh, local uh, partners in the city of Flod, and we were building actually uh, this uh, public program. Public program means the afternoon activities at, and it will be uh, based uh, on the local knowledge, but with professionals as well. So sometimes it's professionals and sometimes it will be a, a, a local, a, the local dance group, the local theater group. So it's always a mixture, as I said, always from the outside and from the inside. So Zoom is very unique in this way. We always mix between the local and the outside. So you will be exposed, uh, uh, get your inspiration, but also show your own culture and art. So every day we have a very rich program in the museum for two months and becomes a very important art center when we are there, showing the mayor and his, you know, all, all his stuff that art and culture can be very important for him. Again, not just five people coming, but a huge group of people, thousands of people are entering the museums and it makes an impact on, on his own, you know, um, 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 yeah, he wants to be elected again. He needs the people. Uh, so usually art, um, um, especially, um, um, yeah, this kind of art won't be, you know, uh, the most uh, um, popular as we know. Uh, usually if it will be uh, bring, you know, a very popular singer, that will make a bigger impact on his life. But suddenly such a huge museum coming to town, taking such a big space, bringing many people, so he understand that it could, if it works really like right the right way, if he puts the right amount of money, it could work. Okay. So here we have. Um, um, I, I would I, I would tell you something. We were um, working in four cities for four years. Started uh, 2017, 2000, uh, almost 2019. We won even the Sotheby's International Prize for the rethinking the model of the museum. And uh, after four and a half years traveling in Israel, um, uh, we, we were working with um, the Lower Galilee um, uh, municipality and we were about to build their museum and COVID came and we tried to build a museum for three times, but we couldn't. Uh, so I've decided to make a change and we decided to move to a bigger city and work in the public space. And we came to the city of Lod. Uh, Lod, was, uh, Lod. Lod is a city, maybe if you flew uh, once to Israel, you flew towards Ben Gurion. Ben Gurion Airport sits in Lod. It's a city of the middle of the country, a mixture between Arabs and Jews. Um, really uh, a big uh, 80,000 people uh, uh, live there. Um, uh, it's really important to understand it's a really mixed, very interesting mixture of people, immigrants and not immigrants, like a, um, 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 a lot of tension between the Arabs and the Jews, but possible like every city, mixed city, you probably know Akko uh, when you work with uh, yeah, Western Galilee. Um, and we were about to open the museum. Uh, we were about to open the museum, as you say, uh, you see May 18 and May 12, we were working in, in the public sphere, um, installing our exhibition. Uh, more than uh, almost 50 artists were about to present. The exhibition was, was there in this beautiful courtyard, Ottomanic, Ottomanic courtyard. Uh, we were building it, we were installing. And uh, the, the artwork was there, the, 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 um, uh, the guides were already trained, the, uh, our catalogs was, were already uh, printed, everything was intact, really, we were almost ready. Um, and then uh, at the afternoon, uh, we got a phone call uh, from a friend telling us uh, that uh, there were missiles uh, starting uh, on Jerusalem. She was alone and she said, okay, guys, come back uh, home. Uh, you can't work right now outside. And we went back to our kids at home. 
And we knew that in the Israeli, um, I would say day to day, we are used to have uh, from time to time misses. It happens today and tomorrow you go back, which is fine. But um, the place that we chose was the place that was very safe for Jews and Arabs to come together because it was in the middle of town between the Jewish neighborhood and the Arab neighborhood. But at that night, not just the Jews and the Arabs, the Jews and the Arabs didn't come there to, to, to see the art, but they actually came with guns, with weapons, and started shooting at each other. Lot became, uh, became um, a, a crazy, crazy war zone, kind of, and, and it, it, they, they, we had lockdown in the middle of the city, we couldn't go back. It was really in the streets that we are. We were working there, and uh, after two weeks that we were not allowed to go back, uh, we decided to come back because the city was open again, and it was kind of a silence, but not like a weird quietness. They still do this. They still have a weird quietness, I would say. And they were start. They started. Uh, we started asking people, our local partners, what what should we do now? Should we open the exhibition again? Uh, should we do another exhibition? And I would say something something else. The subject matter of the exhibition was uh, from um, past progressive to future perfect. Do you feel that something is mean, missing? The present. The Present simple is not, not what it wasn't very, very simple. It was quite crazy times. And we were debating what to do. Some of my staff left because they said that we are not going to this crazy city to work again. Some of my, of my staff said, okay, no, just let's just continue building the exhibition and coming back. And I knew that we need to do something else. I need, I knew that we need to work with the present, with the local people. And I want to tell you another thing. Uh, the most, um, the thing that was really um, um, got hurt the most was the doorstep of the people. They were afraid to open their, their own door. People, the neighbors were shooting at each other and it was really scary times. They were afraid from each other. And from this reason, we decided to build a new project called the Zumo, Zumo Lot, the threshold. So it's, it's kind of the liminal space between, you know, the different neighborhoods, between the different uh, doors that people are living. We invited, we invited the, the neighbors to come downstairs to listen to their own story. I want to tell you something. After a month, Nobody would come to their build, to their neighborhood, usually very poor neighborhoods, and nobody would ask them what happened. Tell us, share with us. But we came and we were listening, and we asked what happened. And every story had, you know, we had different stories, uh, uh, parallel stories between different societies, between the Jews and the Arabs. And we needed, we knew that we can work with both of them. So we invited 24, 25 artists uh, to get uh, the threshold, the, the entrance of the building, of every building, got an artist. And we invited all the neighbors to come downstairs and to talk to the artists, to tell their own stories. And in this way, uh, the artist would build uh, an artwork, a permanent artwork. The way that we did it, it we opened, you know, uh, um, a table with some artworks, you know, just a, um, a workshop for the kids. And we were talking to their parents and they were so happy that we were listening to them. We were, you know, this conversation was so important for them. The Jews and the Arabs, different languages. We had, of course, people like local people that were talking to them open our doors to, you know, because we, 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 never, we never met them. So we needed to, that somebody will open the door and we were listening. And then we built a, a, a festival for four days in August with performances, with workshops, with uh, um, block parties, but with amazing artworks that was based on the, on the local stories of the different uh, communities. 
Uh, this is a work that by Ronen Sharabani, a great artist that work in the Arab uh, uh, building, uh, like Arab neighborhood, I would say. Uh, uh, the, the way that you can imagine yourself, you know, entering uh, towards like uh, some specific entrance. I, I don't know, maybe it's a bit blurry and, and it's a little bit uh, difficult to understand. Uh, this is work by Oren Fischer. Oren was asking the, the different stories of the neighbors and writing them down in the same silhouettes. It doesn't matter if you're Jew, if you're Arab, you, if you're immigrant from Ethiopia or Russian, you have the same silhouette, but on the other hand, you have different story. And, and these buildings are so neglected. These neighborhoods are so neglected. It's not, there was a reason that people chose to take weapon. It's, there is never a reason, but I mean, if you want to understand them, you understand that these places were so neglected. And for us to enter there and to work with our own, you know, a common place and their common stories, we made a, a huge impact on their life. And we actually brought thousands of people to visit Lod, not talking for a first time about violence, but about culture, about art. So again, it's really empowering and it's for everyone. We always have these kids that are working with us, you know, local kids that they're always, we call them the museum kids. They're always so interested. So this guy, uh, Mahmoud, he was running, he has a parrot in his head and he was running with us to every neighbor, uh, bringing coffee to the artist, bringing food to the artist. And we, the artist was so spoiled with food and great welcome, you know, it was summer. So the kids are not going there to summer camp. It's not in, it's not like in the States, but it, even in Israel, this is a very poor neighborhood. And suddenly the artist coming and working on the doorstep so imagine that the like an old lady coming down, bringing lunch, this kid coming, bringing drinks, working with the artist, painting with him. Suddenly this place became uh, some, you know, some small hope, something to, to hope that we, it can change. And I'm sorry, my English is a bit blurring. I think I'm, I'm, I'm a bit tired from this all day long, but I mean, it's really, I, I'm, I'm so excited to talk about it. It's really touching because a uh, few months ago, it was a really war zone. And now I was just there yesterday. It's still there. It's beautiful. Nobody's ruining because it's theirs. It's their own stories. So nobody will, you know, touch it and make it and, and ruin it. And for me, this is a huge success. Also, another thing that we didn't have guides, but we had local people. Charlie, we trained them to tell their own stories, but towards, you know, through the arts. So uh, um, Hilda, our local guide or our local host, will tell the story about the artwork through their, her own story. So she will tell the people that came to visit that she was afraid. She will tell what happened to her. But on the same time, the people that visiting, you know, this this path of artworks, they will listen to the Jews, the Jew story, the immigrant story, the, the immigrant from Russia and the Ethiopian ones. So it's different and it's varied and tell the story of the city. It was a very happy, uh, happy um, ending to this terrible situation. And from, from this, uh, festival, suddenly we had two models. We had the model that I was talking with you, you know, the first with the art education, community engagement of the museum. And now we have another model of the threshold. So we are building currently our museum in Naharia, actually in the Western Galilee, uh, in the Zoglovec um, factory that will be open from May 13 until July 2nd. And in uh, and from there we are going to work in Jaffa Daled. Jaffa Daled, it's a very poor neighborhood. Again, uh, a place that connect between Jews and Arabs, different immigrants. Again, we will work with the model of the threshold. So we know, you know, we had great ingredients, but now we have two kinds of cake. Sometimes it's cake, sometimes it's cupcake. It, it depends. How do you call it? 
just to finish this and that's it i think i'm good with times right like i'm okay with the time you're perfect okay uh, i can stop sharing and then we'll have time for also we yeah, really I'm, hope that you will come to ACO soon right <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully, we are waiting uh, from some for some answers from the mayor. But I mean, Ako was also interested. Uh, uh, about, they were interested about the threshold the project as well. Yeah. Uh, we're open so, up for questions. If uh, anybody has a question. Um. Yes, yeah, I overwhelmed everyone. Yes, sir. I don't have a question, but I'm trying to learn about reaching out, and I'm trying to learn about connections. I I love making them, but I don't know how to sustain anything. And so your your explanations about being brave enough to just go in and um it any it, it's in, it's inspiring me to realize what it takes uh, you know here in in here that's it's very special thank you thank you thank you so much thank you uh, i have a question um you're you talked about budget and that you bring mm -hmm. with you 80% of the budget correct so how and where do you raise that money from? And kind of what budgets are you working with to do such a, you know, a big project? Right. So we work in, um, we try to work when there is no COVID in two cities a year. <laughs> um, and uh, when I don't lecture about Zumo, I usually fundraise <laughs> for it. Uh, we are not used to it so much in Israel. There is not a big entrepreneurship um, or cultural entrepreneurship in Israel. So um, when I started, I thought I have it all. You know, I have education, I have community engagement, I have the arts. Obviously, everyone would stand, you know, in line to give me their own year right. Okay, so I was a bit naive, um, but uh, but uh, I'm I'm fundraising ev like really every day. And I have like great partners, but that's not enough. So for every city, I fundraise from scratch. I have my, you know, I have my partners, but I accept them. I need to fundraise more uh, with every uh, city that I go to. Um, every city costs around um, uh, 500, um, it's, it's 1.5 million shekels, I would say, but it's a work for six months, okay? So the museum is open, as I said, for free, eight o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock in the evening for two months, local guides, everyone get paid, the artists, everyone get paid. So it's around this kind of um, uh, budget. As I said, the municipality is responsible for 20%. And uh, I work with uh, the Arison Foundation, Azrieli Foundation, the Lottery uh, Foundation here in Israel, we all have all kinds of, of partners. We all, I always look for new partners. If you know about some of them, I have like small hat and big uh, bank account behind me and I'm always um, happy for new partners. But I, I want to tell you in, in two weeks, I'm leaving to the Jewish Funders Network in Miami, South Beach, uh, to talk about, uh, about Zumu. And uh, I'm trying really, and I hope to be in London next year to fundraise again, um, I'm really, you know, learning. Um, and sometimes we have successful turns and sometimes less successful, but uh, I'm optimistic. I think more and more people understand that it's very important and it's not for just, you know, not for a few. The art is for everyone and everyone has the right for art. Yeah, I think it's, very powerful and thank you for being so open and transparent about how you get the funds. It's always a challenge for sure. Um, and uh, it's very inspiring. I'm wondering 
Here we have the same issues. I, I'm thinking about an exhibit that I just went to on Friday, an opening, and it had great turnout for a two hour exhibit, yeah, right? Okay. But the, the materials themselves were only in English and Spanish, and we have other you know, languages that are spoken to other communities within the city that would feel so much more welcome if the materials spoke to them, if they felt included, right? So we were always run into those same issues here. Um, and I think it's something that we really need to think about and how to engage all the audiences. How do we do that? So thank you for bringing that up. And it's something we all need to think about. It's very important issue. We, as I said, we take always like we train always uh, local guides, but we train to find people that uh, that you know are from different minorities, know different languages. So we try to do uh, Russian Monday, uh, Spanish Wednesday, so they can come and we work with the local authorities to find those communities to actually bring them to the museum when we are there, so they feel welcome. They feel welcome in their own home. Uh, uh, this is a different way of thinking. You don't have it even like in Israel, you don't have it in the big museums. I would say that most of the big museums don't even have the Arabic translation in Israel. So that, that's even worse. And I'm not even talking about uh, Arabic curator uh, or Russian curator. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it's not developed as much in Israel and we are not uh, living, uh, um, this way of thinking as you have it now in the states at least in a few states that it's very strong you know the um, the identity uh the, the the identity politics that you can't have you know uh, somebody that's black dealing with uh, black uh, artworks and things like that we are not there yet in israel uh and i'm not sure how we want to be you know so advanced with that but of course you want to feel everyone that will feel welcome at their own home, at their own art center, or in the big museums. People that coming, you know, from Arabic town, or even people that don't know Hebrew enough because they're immigrant. The immigrants, they're not feeling uh, very welcome in the big museums, unfortunately. Wow, Milana. <laughs> Um, we have, I see, only four minutes left. If anybody has a question, I maybe you know, I, I heard from you the other day about uh, you're going to have uh, artists from the United States, right? That will, uh, from, from abroad, yeah, from France and Germany coming to Nalia to have the residency in uh, France and Germany, no, from France and Germany. But we're it's something new because we need we it was it was supposed to be before COVID, but of course everything is you know different world since then. But now we started again. We have uh, an exchange programs with uh, art residencies. So really, if you have art, if you're an artist or you have any ideas of how to work, and you're you're more than welcome to contact me and to think to dig together. If you're running uh, art institutions, please. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I, I would be very appreciating uh, to collaborate and think together. And usually my English is a bit better, but I'm kind of off. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I'm a past co-chair of our arts task force. And, and within that, we built um, several residency exchange programs. So I'd be more than happy to talk with you about that and how we yeah. executed those. And, and that was my next question. If like I could come and apply and be a part of the museum um, or someone in our communities could come and apply and do a residency, so. Yeah, we are hoping to open more and more to, to you know, to, to uh, uh, residencies from abroad. Uh, we got some fun from the French <laughs> Institute and the German and the Goethe Institute, so uh, we were obliged to them. But I mean, otherwise we are hoping so much to collaborate with, you know, uh, different communities and bringing more artists to work in Israel and the opposite way around, you know, for us to send artists or to bring our project uh, to, di to different states. Uh, I think uh, this model can work in every city that you have different identities, different communities, the way that uh, it's very sensitive 
Um, so, and this mixture, like this specific mixture that uh, we know how to work with. So please, um, uh, Avital and Sisi have my phone number and my, my email. Uh, please contact me. I'll be more than happy. Um, Thank you I want so to much. Say to you. Yes, Sisi. Yes. For, first of all, to apologize for not uh, presenting you uh, properly. <laughs> I always have technical problems. But uh, I want to thank you very much because I, I admire your, your uh, artistic uh, activity. And uh, we are waiting for you in Naria. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I'm waiting. Yes, and uh, the, and then I want to um, to thank uh, my uh, dear champions, uh, Kim and Esteban, for being such a good partner. And uh, I hope that the next dream uh, in Budapest will take place also. <laughs> so thank you, and I hope you have a great day and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. And I uh, hope to see you soon, face to face also. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Milan. Thank you. Bye-bye.